your soul, your spirit are vehicles for the conducting of uh, spiritual power. Your nafs, your spirit, is the medium for harnessing and channeling spiritual power, spiritual awareness, spiritual capacity, spiritual realization. When your uh, 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 nafs, And your nafs is the real you. I hope you understand. I hope you understand that your spirit is the real you. It is the you that was created before the physical you. It is the you that will exist after the physical you. It is the you that will be raised up and called before Allah on Yama Kiyama, your nafs, your spiritual self, is the medium for harnessing power. And within your nafs, beating like the heart beats in your chest, is an igniting force of power. It's called the Ruh. Also known as Ki, also known as Chi. Ruh. The generating power. That sparked the creation of our inner self. When we were in the wombs of our mothers, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala sent one of his angels to your mother and my mother. And that angel breathed Ruh into your mama's womb. Mine too. And the result of that, how do you know that, Imam Talib? Because Rasulullah told us so. That's how I know. Right after the first trimester, an angel created for that purpose. Prophet called them angel of life. Entered your mother's womb and conveyed to her DNA conveyed to that fertilized egg in her womb power. And the result of that power is you. Or oh, you who worship Allah. That power ignited created that soul, that nafs, that spiritual being, that spiritual personality. But that's not the end, that's the beginning. That was the beginning of you. And your nafs within this physical body began to grow and mature until as a little baby you exited the womb of your mother into this life. Then you were subjected to uh, uh, external influences that shaped and molded you, made impressions upon your heart and upon your psyche and upon your mind. And you developed the capacity for power. 
your power manifests itself in many different ways. The power manifests itself in your senses. You have the power to speak, the power to hear, the power to express yourself. If you don't think these are powers, lose one of them and see, see what happens. See what kind of person you will be without the power to understand. Convey through, from that ruh, through the nafs that is you. And every day of your life on this earth, particularly those of you who are now mature or maturing in your days of life on this earth, every day of life on this earth, each of us is granted the ability to use our God-given power to create or to destroy. in your own life. Create your own life or destroy your life. You, with the power that Allah has given you. The life of this world is, has elements in it that empower. And the life of this world also has elements in it that de power that weaken during the month of Ramadan. Each fasting Muslim becomes empowered in stages and degrees by the activity of the month. Are you listening to yourself? Right now, during the month of, during this sacred month, during the past 20 days, have you been listening to yourself? Have you heard your soul saying, Alhamdulillah, at last, some energy, some life, some sustenance, some comfort some peace, some power. If you're fasting, that's what your soul is saying. If you use your spiritual powers of perception and turn them inward, you can hear your soul talking to you. The Messenger of Allah, alayhi salam wa salat, said that the faster uh, 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 the, uh, experiences two joys. Joy when it's time to break the fast and joy when it's time for him or her to meet his or her Lord, he said. <clears throat> we become so sensitive during this month and so grateful that you reach a time when you're thankful to Allah just for a little bit of water and a date. Grateful in sincerity for a little bit of water and a date. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. For those who fast during this month, and listen to what I'm saying now, because I know that there are some of us who physically cannot fast because we're on medication and we might be pregnant or uh, our health is such that our physical constitution cannot sustain a fast. That's just a physical part of it. And not to minimize it. But we should realize that not eating and not drinking is the beginning of the fast, not the end. So just because you're on medication or whatever, or have a condition, 
You should still be fasting during the month of Ramadan. You should still be restraining your temper and your tongue and your desires during the month of Ramadan. You should still be exerting yourself to read and recite from the Quran every day during the month of Ramadan, even if you can't physically fast. You should still be standing up in the masjid, standing at night in the masjid or at home, praying the prayers of worship and power during the month of Ramadan. If you don't, you're a fool. If you don't, you're abusing your soul. And if you could hear yourself with the inner ear, you see, physical hearing, physical sight, those are physical powers. They are spiritual powers. There's spiritual sight and insight. There's hearing with the heart. Perceiving with the nafs. It's just that some of us do it consciously and some of us are unconscious. Here's an unconscious manifestation. We look at somebody or something, we say, man, shh, I don't know why, man, but that, that don't feel right. No, I don't... <laughs> I can feel that something is right or something is wrong with this here. Somebody asks, well, give me the reason. I can't give you the reason. Somebody asks, give me the logic. Can't give it to you. But I know what I know, and what you're saying is that your soul knows. And so we say things like, oh, man, I get bad vibes from that, man. Bad vibrations. Or I get good vibrations from that or from him or her. That's just your inability to articulate your spiritual powers. And if you listen to your soul during this sacred month, and I hope you know, you got to turn off the noise in order to hear yourself. This should be a month in which we seek quietude and solitude so that when those messages are being conveyed, we can hear them. When the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the prophet was in seclusion. No noise, no disturbance. Quiet too. He was in a cave. It wasn't a big cave. That same cave that Allah's Messenger alayhi salam was in, that same cave exists right now. You can go to Mecca, go right outside, and if you're in good enough shape to climb up that little mountain, you can go inside the cave yourself. It's not a big cave like you think. I used to think for about 30 years. Whenever I used to think about the prophet in the cave, I thought about a big cave. No, oh, man, it's a little cave. Quiet cave. About, we're taught that about six months before the prophet, alayhi salam, uh, uh, received the revelation, he started having visions. He started going through changes in his soul, and he said, man, I can't function like I usually function. He stopped working, stopped moving about in the worldly life. He got himself a little food, and he went into seclusion in the cave. How much seclusion do you have in your life? In the society of noise and confusion. in the neighborhood of noise and confusion. Power is realized in quietude. 
And some of us never, we never experienced that because we never quiet. 